Good morning, everybody. We're here today to talk about everyone's favorite topic, health insurance and dental insurance. Everybody's very excited. Um, once again, it's that time of the year where we have our online open enrollment, and then also this year is the year for a dependent eligibility update, and we'll talk about both of those topics later. Joining me today is Brian Wallace. Um, I'm sure all of you know Brian. Um, Jill Woolwine is also here. She's really the person, when, if you have uh, follow-up questions, you can work with her. And then Kathy Neuner is also here. She works in the payroll department and works with deductions and things like that for payroll. So um, just wanted her to come and get a little bit acquainted with the process and the, the um, uh, meetings that we're having for all of you. We're also videotaping this today so that if you know someone who's missed the presentation this morning or um, or for others throughout the district who may not have been able to catch a session. So just to caution you, if you have a question that you don't necessarily want to have on, on video, you may just want to wait and talk to us afterward. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, this is, again, that time of the year with open enrollment that you, everyone is going to need to go back and, and re-enroll online. Okay. So remember last year was the first year we used the Benelogic system to do that. We're going to be utilizing that system again. I think we might have some new employees this year in this building. And those of you who say, but I just enrolled. I don't want to have to do this again. You, we do have to require that everybody re-enroll every year through the open enrollment process. This is also time, even if you decline the insurance, that we need to have you um, re-enroll because it's the process that helps us start um, the, the application process for those of you who receive payment in lieu of taking the insurance plan. So even if you aren't taking the insurance, you need to go in and waive it for us. Um, so even if you want to take the same plan, which most of you probably will, you need to go back in and confirm that. And then um, if you don't go in and re-enroll online, you will not have coverage effective January 1st. So it's really important. Um, we do have uh, a system, that Benelogic system in place, does keep track of who is enrolled and who hasn't. So we will be reminding you, but anything that you can do to just kind of get this out of the way would be really helpful for us and we'll make sure that you don't lose your coverage effective January 1st. Okay. Um, again, this is the only time of the year, if you're not taking coverage right now, that you can re-enroll for health care without having a qualifying event. And some of those qualifying events are shown up here. If you get married, you have a baby. For those of you who um, are, are doing that this year, you would be able to do that once the, the child is born. Um, those types of things as, as the year's going on. But if you don't have insurance and you don't have a reason that you might under this um, list, this is the one time that you can add a dependent, drop a dependent, those kind of things. Okay, who is eligible? You can enroll your spouse in the plan, um, and you can also enroll children up to age 26. That's part of the Affordable Care Act that passed several years ago. One thing, though, that is important on the spousal coverage is that you can cover uh, spouses on our plan, but if they have access to another plan, either through a retirement plan or through their employer, then they will likely have to take a single plan under, under, through their employer, and they, but they can be enrolled as secondary on our plan. Okay. If you have dependents that you want to enroll this year, we are doing what's called a dependent eligibility audit. We probably did this about three or four years ago, would have been the last time. And this is a process that most insurance plans are doing fairly frequently to make sure that those dependents that are covered under the plan are truly their dependents, showing that it's your spouse, that you're married, or that it is your um, child under a couple different circumstances. Okay. Now, did everybody get the email that had um, the brochure attached to it Okay, from the health insurance plan? That probably went out about a week ago. within the body of the email, but there's an attachment that has a packet that really outlines a lot of the most critical information that Beth is covering today um, on that attachment. So again, it's October 20th from Jill, 
uh, about a week and a half ago. So if you haven't checked it out, make sure that uh, you go back and look at that and use that as a reference through this process because a lot of what's being shared today, again, is outlined uh, in that email. Okay. And one of the things that's really outlined well within the email is the information and the documentation that you will need to upload into the Benelogic system for the dependent eligibility audit. So as you see here, um, there's a listing of the different circumstances for which you might have a dependent on the plan and the kind of documentation you'll need. If you have a dependent child, probably the easiest one is just to upload the birth certificate. The one that um, is a little bit different than what we've done before is to um, provide information about your spouse. In the past, it was uploading your marriage certificate. The industry standard has changed on that to uploading a copy of your, or the, the first page of your annual tax return. So instead of a marriage certificate, now what they are asking for, because it's your annual verification that you are married to this person, is a copy of the first page of your 1040. Things that we want you to take out or redact out before you upload that, social security numbers, you can take out any kind of income information. We don't need any of that. What we basically need is to show through your 1040 form, just that first page, that you are filing as married for tax purposes, okay? People are not excited about that. I don't, I'm not excited about that, but it's the only way that they have found through um, this industry to be able to show on an annual basis that you continue to be married to someone, okay? So, not exciting, but at least make sure you take out those information, social security number, income information, because that's not what we need to know. We just need to show, have the documentation that you remain married, okay? Any questions about that? Because that's a little bit different than what we've done in the past. Okay. All right. Okay, again, dependent eligibility. Just a little bit of an update or just some additional information about um, the requirements to be able to carry your spouse under the health insurance plan. Again, if your spouse has access to another plan through their employer, through a qualified retirement plan, then they have to take at least a single plan through their employer through that other source and be carried as primary. You can continue to carry them on our plan as, a, as secondary if you want to. And for most people, if you have to carry your kids on the plan, you may as well put them on as secondary in our plan because there's not gonna be any additional premium cost. And that's a, a, you know, a secondary source potentially if you would have a serious situation. If you don't need to carry other dependents on your plan, you probably just wanna do a cost analysis and see if paying that extra premium for the family plan is worth it when you look at the benefits that you might actually get uh, as carrying them on secondary. Um, one thing that a lot of people don't know is that if your uh, spouse has another plan for um, health insurance for and has prescription drug coverage, there's no secondary insurance on prescription drugs. So sometimes it's not necessarily cost beneficial for you to pay that extra premium thinking I can get some additional money in claims for prescription drugs. So that's one thing you might want to look at. Okay, are there any questions on that? Okay. Okay. There are some ways that your spouse can be covered. Again, number one, if they don't have employment or access to other insurance. That would be a way that they could be covered primarily under ours. If they have access to another plan, but they have to pay more than 55% of the individual premium, then they would be able to be covered under our plan as the primary carrier, okay? Um, and, or if maybe we have some who are self-employed and just don't have access to another employee-sponsored plan, okay? If you are going to cover your spouse as, the, as primary on our insurance, the important thing is you will be asked to submit a coordination of benefits worksheet, okay? And you may have done that in the past, but we're asking you to do that again. It's just a, a sheet that is out on Blackboard, and I believe that there's some other ways to get that. And it's also on the, they have to, they can get it on the Benelogic website? Okay. 
And you can also get it on the Benelogic website when you're going to log in. It's one of those things you might want to start looking at now because if, you, if your spouse does have coverage through their employer but have to pay more than the 55%, you're not going to need to get certification from your employer about that. Is there any other reason that they might need to do that? Okay, but that's going to be important because as you go through the enrollment process, they're going, the Benelogic process is going to prompt you to upload that spreadsheet if you're carrying your spouse as primary on our insurance for medical. It's not important for dental, it's just important for medical. Okay, so now all that stuff that's not fun at all, there, here is some good news. Um, for the third year in a row, we're not seeing any increase in our premiums from the Butler Health Plan. We had a 5% decrease, and now for the last two years, we have been able to keep um, the, the premium rates the same. Um, and for that, most Sycamore employees' contributions will stay the same as well. The only exception for that is with our classified staff, as, as a result of negotiations this past year, we do have an increase in some of the dental plans. So the, for the medical plans, no increase at all. Okay, all employees, no increase, increase at all. For the dental plans, you're going to need to look at the different plans that we have available. If you take the more, um, r the richer plans, then there will be a little bit of an increase in what you pay. If you take the basic plan, which has a little bit less benefit, um, it'll cost you a little bit less. Okay, we've, we've sent that information out along, was that on that same email, Brian? Uh, that is, and then um, just to plug also Blackboard, uh, we spend a lot of time cleaning up our Blackboard site. Um, so if you log into Blackboard and go there uh, under Human Resources, uh, there is a whole tab dedicated to open enrollment, and there's a significant amount of information about this process that you're hearing about. Included in there are your premium rates, for both dental and, uh, and medical. You'll see those changes reflected on there. Uh, there's also, to plug that real quick, is there's also a tutorial on there, how to go on, and, and Beth's gonna talk about the enrollment process here in just a moment. Um, but there is a, uh, a tutorial from our own Mr. Gutermuth uh, on there, and he leads you through basically step-by-step step how to go on and do the online enrollment uh, and upload process. So that's on there, so I'd encourage you, if you have questions after this, go to Blackboard, again, a uh, ton of resources on there, and then after that, if you still can't find it, then give us a buzz. But mm -hmm. yeah, that, uh, that information will be on Blackboard. Mm -hmm. Once this video is updated, it'll be out there, and this presentation is also available on Blackboard. Okay. Um, does anyone here take the high deductible plan with the HSA? Okay. Um, that, those premiums stay the same. The contribution that you receive from the district into that for the certificated staff, there's no change for 2017. For classified staff, it has changed to 1,200 for employee only and 2,200 for the family plans. Once we um, get our enrollment for the year, if you're enrolled in that plan, we'll send you additional information so that you can update um, what you contribute to that plan on a voluntary basis. Okay. What will be different this year? Again, no change in premium. What has changed, and you may recall back in, I think about April or May, we sent an email out letting you know that HealthSpan, which had been the network for our plan for, for several years, had been purchased by Medical Mutual, okay? <laughs> and with that, we had to look at the network provided for the health, so that would be the providers and the hospitals that are available with our health care plan. So in looking at that, Butler Health Plan looked at probably six or seven different networks and determined that they would change everyone within the program to Anthem Access PPO. So we are going to be um, in the Anthem healthcare system. They looked at this because um, one of the things that was definitely an advantage for going with Anthem is that they looked at providers and hospitals that our patients were using, our employees were using, and determined that there would be very little, if any, disruption for most people. So the doctor that you are using is very likely within the Anthem PPO network. Um, and the hospitals, I think all of them that were included within the uh, HealthSpan network are in Anthem. 
So very little disruption to you. So that was a major benefit of going to Anthem. We also had some districts that were already utilizing Anthem within the Butler Health Plan, and they had a very smooth transition when they went from HealthSpan to Anthem and found little disruption. So that was, a, was good news for all of us. The change that may impact you more than anything is that where you may have used Allied, you used Allied in the past as our third party administrator for our health, cla health claims, now they are going to be um, administered by, Ally, or by Anthem. So change from Allied to Anthem, okay? So everything will go through Anthem now. Um, one thing that, that you may need to think about, if you have any claims outstanding at the end of the calendar year, Allied will stay on board to help finish out those claims. So if you have something happen in December, um, Allied will continue to, to complete those claims for you, okay? One thing that might be important too, if you do not have a net or have a login right now with Allied, you may want to do that, and the reason for that is you will still continue to have access to your allied claims information for, a, for 12 months after uh, January 1st. So if you want to continue to have some information about your claims that have happened in the past, make sure you have an account with allied. If you already have one, you'll have access to that for 12 months. Okay, any questions about that? That's going to be a key difference, but as we get closer to the time that we change over January 1st, we'll provide some more information about that, okay? The other thing, does anyone have the EPO plan? It was a, the plan that's just through the Mercy Health System? Okay. That, that plan is going away because we no longer have health span. If you, do ha if you did have the EPO, uh, Jill has notified those people to make sure that they know they're gonna have to take a different plan this upcoming year. Okay. This is just a screenshot of the Anthem website, so www.anthem.com. You may want to go out, look around, check and see if your doctor is in the plan. That's something that you can do right now. And again, it's the Anthem Blue Access PPO. So if it asks you for which network you're looking at, and again, that's on this website. It's also in the brochure that we sent out earlier, so you can see that information, okay? Um, if you find out that your doctor's not on the plan, sometimes because of the group they're in, maybe the individual doctor isn't listed, the easiest thing to do is just call the doctor's office and check with them because nine times out of ten they may be in, they're just not on the website yet. Yeah, okay. and a tip on that, when you're doing the search, and I went through that and did the same thing just to see if our uh, providers were in network. Um, when you go through this general information because it's asking what do you want, what medical, what state are you in, and once you kind of narrow that down, then you're gonna, they're going to give you, do you want to search by distance from where you live? Um, what I would, or type of uh, provider, what I would do is put the provider's name in there. That was a recommendation that was given to us. You actually put your doctor or your provider's name in there. It's much more reliable than if you just put in, give me something you know, within 20 miles of 45242. Because you're going to get a ton of information, and it may or may not include your provider, but if you do it by name, uh, that tends to be a little more reliable on that. So just a, kind of a helpful tip that, that was given and, and proved to be useful as well. Okay. Any questions that? Yeah, Melissa. HealthSpan had um, a Fourier assistance program. Is there one through Anthem too? There will be one from Anthem as well. The Good. question was, is there an employee assistance plan? And yes, there will be one through Anthem as well. I don't know if, is that, a, it, we'll have to check on that, but I think it's on an annual basis, so your number of visits would start again, yeah. Okay, we'll be get back with you on that and send something out. Thing. Would you have the same providers too? Um, that I'm not sure of, okay. but the reason we are looking at Anthem for that is because if you would need to be moved into the network, then there's a coordination of that, those network providers. Okay, medical plan options, again, PPO, which is what the vast majority of our employees enroll in each year, and the high deductible health plan, and those plans are staying the same as they were last year. <clears throat> we have the minimum value plan available also. We have that really more to help us with the Affordable Care Act if we have a non-employee who might qualify for health care because it's a very low cost plan for the employer, but I will tell you, 
the issue for most of us is that it doesn't have out-of-network benefits and it has a very high deductible. So we do not recommend that you take that plan, okay? All right. Express Scripts is still in place, so that is not going to be changing going forward. Um, dental plans are still through Delta Dental, and the three plans that we've had in place are still in place, so uh, no change there. With one thing I would just say for you and the classified staff, you may want to look at what coverage you, you need and the cost. For example, a lot of people may not need to take that premium plan if they don't need to take if they don't need orthodonture for themselves or for their kids. That's a, a way that you might want to save money on what uh, premium you pay out of your pocket. However, the annual amount is a little bit higher on that, so if you know you're going to have to have a crown coming up or some major dental work, sometimes taking that premium plan is a good idea. Okay. All right, so how to enroll online, and all this again is on the brochure, on the website, on Blackboard, so that you can go back and look at this but it's really the same process that you used last year. So at least um, you can have some familiarity when you get into the system, you'll see it. And probably the most important thing is whatever plan you took last year and your dependents, they are still preloaded. So you're not gonna have to, if you don't have changes, you're not gonna have to make any changes this year. It's gonna have all that information already online. So last year you had to get out your kids' social number, social security numbers and all those kind of things. This year, it's preloaded with whatever you're currently taking. You just need to make changes. Um, the information on how to log in is in the brochure. If you uh, had an account already set up last year, then you would have a you wouldn't have the uh, default password. This might be a time to just go in, try to log in, and do the forgot your password and get that reestablished for this year. Okay. And again, even if you're waiving coverage, you need to do this. Okay. This is also where you are going to upload and when you're going to be requested to upload the information on your dependents. Okay. This is just a screenshot, so you'll know that you're in the right place when you do the login or to go in and log in. Okay. This is a screenshot of the file cabinet page. This is where you would go in and upload your dependent eligibility information. And again, we do have the tutorial on the Blackboard site that helps you see how uh, you would do this. I would tell you too, for those of you who don't have a scanner, we probably have one. We have one here on your copier, so this would be, you might be able to scan those in at work. Um, or we are also gonna have a session at the district office where you can come in if you need some assistance in getting this information uploaded into Benelogic, you can do that. Okay. All right. Okay. So again, we've talked a lot about the ways you can get additional information. Keep reading those emails from Jill. She's sending you out probably the best information and keep them, refer back to them as you need to. Butler Health Plan has some information as well if you need more detailed information about the plans. And then again, Blackboard under the Human Resources Insurance Open Enrollment page has all of this stuff out there and, and a lot more. Okay. And there's a screenshot of how that page looks. Okay, so now when? We've talked a lot about what we need to do, but not when. Um, the open enrollment period is November 7th through the 21st, so starting next Monday for the next two weeks um, is the mandatory open enrollment time. So make sure you get into the system in that time frame, and we'll send out frequent reminders just to make sure that you know that it's started. If you have someone, if you're not the person who makes the medical decisions in your family, make sure you forward that information to them. I know my husband, who is a teacher, never, ever, ever reads those. He forwards them without even looking to them to me, so I take care of that. If you have someone like that in your family, make sure they have the information, too. Okay. Enrollment cards. Um, before January 1st, when all of this goes into place, you will get, um, a, everyone will get a new anthem card, okay? So everybody should be on the lookout for a new anthem ID card. If you don't make any changes at all, that's the only new ID card that you're going to get. If you do make changes, you'll get um, a new 
Delta Dental card, if you make changes to the dental plan, you'll get a new Express Script card. Um, if you make changes to your prescription coverage, so if you make changes, you'll get new cards. If you don't make any changes to your plan, the only one you'll get will be the Anthem card. And those of you who have not been enrolled in the plans at all before, you'll all get new cards too, okay? Um, if you don't, if you, for some reason you don't get those before December 31st, probably the biggest thing that becomes an issue for people is prescriptions. And basically when you go into uh, the pharmacist, the easiest way to make sure that you're getting your prescriptions is just to give them your social security number. Typically they can look up your information that way and get your prescriptions filled. You can also download a temporary ID card on the Anthem website. Okay. All right, um, November 7th through the 21st is also the time frame to enroll in the Shard Snyder plan, and this is important for people who um, enroll in the dependent care plan, so some of your child care expenses, that kind of thing. Um, you can have uh, up to $5,000 tax-free tax, um, tax -free, um, put into a, um, the Shard Snyder account, have that deducted from your paycheck. Um, and then also up to $2,500 per year for unreimbursed medical expenses. So that's available again. No change from last year. The key thing, just as it, it has been every year, is that you have to re-enroll every year. It's not an automatic. We need a new form each year. Okay. Um, we're also having um, American Fidelity for some of you who take voluntary life insurance, um, uh, disability insurance, those kinds of things. Bob Harrison will be back out in your building. It looks like actually he'll be here on the 14th. So there'll be a sign up in the office for you to see Bob if you're interested in any of those voluntary benefits. Okay. Um, 